Well, hello, everybody. This is uh, Mr. Bomboy here talking to you, and I am going to have you set up a print for the 3D printer. So how do you get from Blender to the 3D printer? And that's what we're going to work on today. The first thing that you should notice is that uh, you should pick a model that's easy to print. Now, this one that I have is very difficult to print. Models that are easy to print have a nice bottom that is flat and not too much negative space in between. As you can see, this model has a lot of negative space. So whenever you have negative space like this, you know, the printer can build on top of printed layers as it works. That's fine. This all works great. That could build up. Same thing over here. This could build up, except for this little gap right here could build up pretty easily, even over here, up to a 45 degree angle, it can build on top of itself. But once you get to here, uh, that's gonna be very difficult for the printer because there's nothing to build on top of underneath. This is called overhang, something you wanna avoid, all right? So as I look at this file here, you know, uh, there's a lot of overhang. Uh, that means that you're going to have support built in. You're gonna, it's, the, it's gonna go and Replicator G is going to put in support uh, that you have to peel away. And when you do that, it'll leave this area very rough, and I will uh, show you that in a in a picture uh, at some point. And so you want to choose a model that's really easy to print. So let me go and see if I can find something that is a little easier to print than this. So I've had a lot of success with this head here, and the reason why is because it's easy to print. Uh, it's flat as I look at it, and it has a flat bottom, and I know I have examples of these in my classroom, which you may have seen, and it's something that you want to be aware of. So I look at this, it's got a flat bottom on it, uh, it's going to be able to build up, and even though it may need to build out a little bit, you can see that is a shallower than 45 degrees, so you know it's not coming out this way and overhanging, and it builds up just fine without any support. If I look at it from the side view, same thing. Uh, I can even build out that far. That's okay. That's just a little bit of overhang. All right. There's all kinds of tools that Blender gives you to be able to uh, assess all of this as well. So this model actually came out uh, really nice looking. And uh, again, it's got a flat bottom on it. It doesn't have near as much negative space as the other one. So you need this 3D printing toolbox to get this stuff out of here. And the easiest way to do that, I already have it installed. But normally you would just see tools and create and uh, relation and animation over here on these tabs. You're, you need to find it in the add-ons. So you need to go to file and then you need to go to user preferences. And then you need to go to add-ons here. Once you get to add-ons, you want to go and you want to type in, I think the easiest way is probably to find print. Yes, type in print in the search box and then you'll see mesh 3D print toolbox. Now, as soon as you go and you click on this here, uh, enable it, it is ready to go. You click Save User Settings, and then you X this out. And after you see that, after you do that, you should see this tab down here called 3D Printing. Okay, it's Print 3D, as you can see. Now, there's all kinds of stuff in here uh, that you can check. But really, the most important thing is two things. Number one, you want to make sure that your mesh is non-manifold. All right. Uh, or, or that you want to look for non-manifold parts. Manifold means if you were to put water inside of this mesh, it would not leak at all. So when I go and uh, click on this, let's see what it says. Modified verts, zero, edges, zero, faces, zero. That means this thing is tight. There's no holes in it. If you get an error message and it changes in here, there is a threshold and different sides that you can choose. Uh, you need to do a little bit more work of patching up faces. Now, to be able to go and export this out, you want to go also and you want to change this to STL, not OBJ. Then you're going to click export. And wherever you have your project saved, uh, wherever it is, it is held in a folder, this will export to the same place. But you can check that by just going and checking in your directories there. And it is going into the same folder. I have it in a folder called successful prints in the head folder. All right. So I'm going to click accept there. And when I'm ready, I just click export. Now up here it'll say, I exported this, and it's gone to, it's called uh, low poly head, it looks like, uh, head form for, for carving. So I'm ready to go there, 
and that gave me an STL. So let's go and see if it's in there. Here is the folder, I know that. And if I sort it by date modified, sometimes that helps me. I can see today I have one that is called uh, uh, head form for carving low poly head underscore 001.stl. Now, this is an STL file, and you can only open this up now using Replicator G. So uh, the Replicator G program is available, and that is in the next tutorial.